Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living, retirement, having. When a man has woken up for a morning nap because the rain forecast, according to other people, was that it was going to rain by 20%, he might lay himself down so he has more energy for the rest of the day. A person who is walking all over the community, having to push his things or provide himself the steadiness of a rollator cart, does not need people making fun of him as if it's an art. Every time I get on my computer or I get on a Wi-Fi network, there is someone in that house that is employed by someone who is cutting and editing my work. What I'm going to say to that person is if they're willing to pay my salary today, then by all means walk in front of me and actually stop. Talk to me. Tell me what you've been doing illegally on my name and on my rights, and I'll tell you what God in heaven is going to do to your life. You see, people who make fun of the psychics and mediums and people on television networks actually regard them. They recognize them because they're making a living. But there are many people across America that have gifts that don't ever get employed using them. I myself have had myself tested by a man's assistant. She is no longer his partner in business because I have noticed that her content is no longer on his incredible website. But he may have made, have, made, have made a decision to separate ways or she might have finally taken some advice that said go off and handle things differently for your days. But what she did tell me when she was evaluating my skills and having me do a few free readings for people that she knew well and probably people that she wanted to have love relationships with because she was of that nature and that type was it openly that my skill sets are quite well almost a half to a third of what that man was getting paid my presumption is that when you put together an industry that does things like that you meet a lot of people one thing I know from having done events in that realm is that each person likes to get read by another and they often trade skills I am only allowed to trade skills or do free readings for people that God say it's okay to do that for. I might sometimes give someone a prophetic word or give them a reading that totally moves them because they are surprised that a mentalist like me might be able to know something super private to their health history. And openly, I might be able to tell them something about the person they're with or the person that's coming into their life. But when a person fails to recognize God's will for their life, they put their whole life at risk. They can find a marvelous player who looks great on their arm, but they might discover something unex unimportant is not true. They might discover something that changes their whole world. The liars of the world tend to associate with liars of the world. I will admit that I have fallen one time in love with a magnificent liar. And that magnificent liar played me, used me, and threw me away, all with this attitude of, I'm not responsible today for what I did before. And yet, that individual has driven in and out of a community to take a look at me, to run by me, to do things to, what, try me? I don't know. But at no time did that marvelous woman ever stand in front of me and say, I'm sorry for what happened before. The difference between a person of integrity and a person of the house of God is not too different. The person who represents the house of the Lord doesn't say there is a different God and you worship it. A person that represents the house of the Lord knows there is only one God, a male and female God, and that male and female God has the right to bestow and endow any human being that submits their life to God with a lot of gifts. Sometimes that gift is of food through a stranger, but that food has to be approved by God. Sometimes that situation is some cash so the person can buy food safely on their own. But again, that is a gift from God, because that individual actually didn't play with the words they heard on a radio or a video channel. That individual actually was moved in their soul to do something. But what's always amazing are some of the players can be moved and bow down to the Lord. I can remember a situation of a couple of weeks ago of a young man who was probably presenting himself as one thing when he really represented another thing, and he was starting to play as if he was in charge of the day. 
And what my Lord did was literally weed him to the ground. You see, it's not me who weeds you to the ground. It's not me who understands the problem of your father's situation with you or your problem of your alcoholic mother and those things too. It's the Lord who knows all those things. And a child who wants to be arrogant can be read to the ground that he starts to cry. And that is what that man did, unless, of course, he's a marvelous actor acting in front of a video camera across the way. The liars of the land like to take away rights. They like to break computer screens. They like to change out backs on computers that don't belong to them to replace their own and fit it differently. They like to steal a battery that doesn't belong to them. They like to do a lot of things that cause harm to others. But what they failed to recognize is that the minute they did that, they majorly misrepresented themselves. What they prove to their family and friends who know what they're doing is that they're a liar to the end. And what they fail to think about, I always say, is the afterlife. What will your life be like in the afterlife when God above, Jesus Christ, or whatever the fuck you believe in, actually decides to read your life in front of the Lord Most High? When you stand at the gates, what are we always told through stories and film and other mythology of what happens? That someone greets you and starts to show you your life. There's a marvelous Al Brooks film that I can't remember exactly the title with Meryl Streep, of which she is helping him to see his mistakes in life. And he had to struggle through it because it was going to place him someplace he didn't want to go. And maybe he got a chance to go back in time. I don't remember, but it's sort of the role of Ebenezer Scrooge in the Saint Charles or the Charles Dickens uh, series. And I'll probably monkey up the titles of classic literature. But we see it every Christmas to remind us of the importance of prosperity, but to also remind us of the importance of poverty and what a little bit of generosity can do for a life. You see, in the one version, we lost Tiny Tim. And yet in another version, he was saved because of someone loving on him. We can see all kinds of disabilities advertised on TV and in film and in video across the world. But when you're faced in front of Jesus Christ with someone who's in poverty, in struggle, and you walk by them, are you not the marvelous person like the people in the Good Samaritan stories of the Bible, in which so many different types of people walked by a person who was in need and had been bloodied and stolen from by thieves. But the final person did nothing to misrepresent him himself. He decided he was going to care for him, tend him, and put him up in a hotel. But here's the challenge of our life today, is that there are Indian groups, there are cultural groups, there are ethnic groups that have been studying American citizens and profiling them. They've also been studying our marketplaces and looking for opportunities to win. What we know about the metaphysical world is that there is a definite marketplace for people who can do readings well. There is a lot of money to be made if you're an honest reader or if you can give a good show. My metaphysical teacher, who did not teach me my gifts but did teach me some different things, certainly taught me some amazing things. But I could always tell when she was in bullshit mode and when she was in real mode. In other words, when I knew she was really getting gifts versus when she had just been playing information like in that marvelous film by Steve Martin where he was getting tips from his crew or he, she got tips in advance from people who brought friends to those spaces. The people in the world today must recognize who is who. If a manager will not take in information about modest theft that is done in generosity is one thing, but if that person does that regularly or does it in order to use it to abuse someone physically, then that company is in great bereft. Because in life we have moments of time to speak the truth. The truth is someone has monstrously abused someone, and yet they're getting away with it. They're allowed to do it because police officers don't care. Their attitude is, so what? But when it's their child, when it's someone they care about, then what? Will then they step in and do their job? Or will they just allow it to continue because they don't mind it at all?